terminal. And this is going to be the same for uh, Windows users as well as the Mac users. And let me zoom in a bit so that you can see what I type in this command prompt. So all you need to do is, well first what we need to make sure we have is Java dash version. If you type that in your command prompt and hit enter, it should show the latest version of Java 9. I showed you in the beginning of the course how to upgrade to Java, uh, from Java 8 to Java 9. And if you have done that, when you type in Java dash version, you should see the latest version here, um, Java 9. So to launch JShell, all you got to do is type in JShell, just like that, and hit enter. And there we go. Notice it's saying, Welcome to JShell version 9. Now, if you're running Java 8, uh, this JShell is not going to work for you. You need to have uh, Java version 9 up and running in your system. So make sure you do that. Otherwise, as I mentioned, this command is not going to work. So let's get started. Uh, notice it's saying, Welcome to JShell uh, version 9. And for an introduction, type slash help. So we're going to do that. We're going to type in forward slash help. And this brings up the help menu where you can uh, scroll up and you'll see all the different commands that you can use in JShell. And we're going to be going over some of these as we type code. So uh, ignore that for now. I'm just going to, I just wanted to show you how you can bring up this help menu. You don't need to define a main method or anything like that. You can directly type Java code into this JShell utility. So if I wanted to print something out, I could do system.out.print. And um, by the way, you can use tab for completion. So it, if you type tab, it's going to automatically give you the different methods that you can use. I can use print, print f uh, for a formatted print, and then print line, which we are used to. So if I type in L and hit tab, notice it uh, auto completes that for us. Okay. Now uh, to this uh, argument of the print line method, I can pass in hello there and surround that with the quotes and then close the parentheses and hit enter. And there you go, notice it's saying hello there. You may have noticed that I didn't put a semicolon. You don't need a semicolon in single statements like this in JShell. You, you of course need it in, a, in an actual Java program when you're coding, when you're writing a program in Eclipse or any IDE, you want to make sure that it compiles and you have to of course have the semicolons, but in this experimental environment, they save us from that uh, uh, extra syntax. But if you have a code block such as a loop or a method body, you're still going to need to have the semicolon at the end of your statements. And we'll go over an example of that. Uh, so I just printed something to the screen. If I want to define a variable, I could do string. And uh, let's define a variable, we'll call it var. And we'll give it the value hello and hit enter. And now we have a variable called var. If I type in var, notice it gives us the result, okay? And I can, of course, print uh, this variable just like any other thing. Now, navigating up to this help menu, um, there is a command called slash list. This basically prints out all the things that we typed on the screen. So if I uh, type slash list, hit enter, notice it's printing out some of the commands that we typed. We typed in this one first. Then we define a variable, and then I typed in var. So it's literally listing that out in that order. I can also define a method. So let's define a method called print 10 times. And it's going to be a, uh, it's going to return nothing, so it's, going to, it's just going to be void. And then we give the method name, uh, which is called print 10 times. And it's going to have an argument of type string. So whatever we give it, it's going to print that 10 times. And in the body of this method, uh, we're going to basically loop, and we need to define an iterator. So um, I'll define a variable of type int called i, and we'll initialize it to 0. And as long as i is less than 10, it's going to continue to increment i. And uh, inside of this for loop, we're basically going to print to the screen um, whatever was passed in as an argument to this method. So notice I typed in uh, tab and uh, it brought in a little bit of um, documentation here. So I could do system.out.print, hit tab, and notice it's giving me that th these options. I'm going to type in ln and uh, pass in the var, which is the, the, ver the, the argument that's passed into the body of this method. I'm going to pass that var 
into this print line statement. And now we need the semicolon because we are inside of a block. We're inside of this block right here, as you can see, inside of the for loop. So we need to make sure that we give a semicolon because in JShell, even though it saves us from the semicolon for single statements, this uh, is not a single statement. This is, this is a block of code where we're looping. So we need to put a semicolon there. Hit enter. And on the next line, I'm going to close the for loop. On the following line, I'm going to close the method definition. So we need another um, parentheses, uh, the curly braces rather. So this is the first curly brace that closes the for loop. This is the second curly bra brace that closes the method definition. So hit enter. And there you go. Notice it's saying created method, print 10 times, and it accepts a string. So if I do the list again by doing slash list, hit enter, notice it's giving me all the things that I typed. Uh, this is the first thing we typed, the second thing, then we printed the value of var, and then we defined this method. Now if I invoke this method, all I would have to do is just to print and then hit tab, and notice it recognized that we have print 10 times. And I can print some, you know, text, so uh, some statement. And close that and hit enter, and boom, notice it print, printed that 10 times. So again, going to slash list, it's giving me all the things that I'm typing up to this point. If I want to drop something, I could, for example, drop this variable that we defined called var. It's of type string. If I do slash drop, this is another thing that you'll find in the help menu, uh, slash drop, and then we give the particular variable or, or class or method or whatever that we want to drop. So hit enter, and notice it's saying dropped variable var. So now if I do slash list, hit enter, notice that we're not even going to see the variable being defined. Okay, that was uh, on line number two right here you won't even see that listed here because we completely dropped it, okay? Uh, similarly, I could drop the method, but before I do that, I want to show you that you can also edit the method. So I could do slash edit, and then I give the particular method or variable that I want to edit, So, or, or it could even be a class. So let's edit print 10 times, hit enter, and it's going to bring up this uh, jshell edit pad, okay? And in here, you can uh, change the contents of this method, whatever you want to do. So to this, I'm just going to add uh, some syntax so that we, we know that we made the edit. So I add, added this arrow. The rest of the method is this the way it was defined. So after you're done making the edits, you can click on this Accept button on the bottom right. I don't know if you can see it. Let me drag this up. This Accept button, click on that, and then close this Edit Pad. And notice it's saying Modified method print 10 times. Let's test whether that's working as expected. So I'm just going to scroll by, by clicking the up and down uh, arrow keys on my keyboard, and it goes through the previous statements that I've typed up. So here's the one that I typed earlier. If I hit enter now, boom, notice that the arrows have been included. So the new uh, method definition has been updated. So we could do slash edit for editing the method or variable or class definition. We could do drop uh, to drop the method. So for example, if I drop this, uh, drop print uh, 10 times, hit enter, and, it, and it's going to say drop the method print 10 times. So now if I do slash list, notice you're not even going to see the uh, statements that I used to, to create that method in the first place. Okay. Now going back to the help menu, I'm going to type in slash help. Let's navigate to the top, and you'll see that there are other things that you can learn about here. For example, this slash vars is going to list the declared variables and their values. This slash method is going to list the declared methods and their signatures. Okay, And if you have classes or interfaces or abstract classes or whatever types, if you do slash types, it's going to list the declared types and imports does exactly what it sounds like. It lists the imported items. And then if you want to exit the jshell, you could do slash exit. Uh, make sure to have the slash there before the exit, and it'll exit the um, jshell. All right, and there's some other things, such as history. This is going to list everything that you typed up to this point. So it's different than this slash list, okay? 
slash list doesn't show everything because if you drop something, um, it won't be there. But if you use slash history, that's going to give everything that you typed up to this point. So let's do slash history. Hit enter. And notice it even recognize it even shows the drop var and then the drop print time uh, print ten times. It's giving us everything that we typed up to this point. That's what history does. So if you want to exit out of JShell, you could just do slash exit and hit enter, and it says goodbye. And here we are back in our uh, regular terminal. As soon as this is done exiting. Now, if I uh, decide to launch the shit JShell again, right, by typing in JShell, hit enter. It's going to take us back into a new instance of JShell. The previous instance is gone, right? All of those variables and methods that we were defining, all of those commands are gone forever. Um, this is a new JShell instance. So if I do slash list, you're not going to see all of those previous commands that we had in the previous uh, JShell instance. So let me exit out of this JShell again. We're back in the command prompt. If I type in clear, this is a Linux command. Um, and it's only going to work on Linux or the Mac. It's not going to work on Windows, but typing in clear just basically clears your command prompt. This is this has nothing to do with JShell. Now, I can also launch JShell with a particular jar. We spoke about jars and how to create jars uh, several lessons ago. Uh, well, we can download a jar from the Internet, and that could contain a library of functionality that we can use in our Java program. If you want to test out that functionality, all you'd have to do is type in jshell minus c and then you state the particular jar that you want included in this jshell session. So let's say if we had a, a jar called super dot jar, we would state it like this and then hit enter. If I do it just like this right now, this is not going to work. All right, it doesn't know where this file is. It doesn't exist yet. So what we need to do is uh, let's really quickly create this jar. This is going to be a quick review. I showed you several lessons ago how to create a jar in the command line as well as Eclipse. So I'm just going to really quickly do that. I have this uh, program called Super Printer. It's just a single class with the main method, and there's a method called print. And it's in a package um, called com.printer.utils. This is just an example program that I created on the fly. So I'm just going to right click and go to export and choose jar file go to next and then we're going to export the generated class files and resources and we're also going to export java source files and resources and uh, I'm going to name this uh, file superman.jar okay and just hit finish and this is going to basically dump it onto our desktop I don't know if you noticed um, let me just really quickly show you if we go back to export uh, jar file uh, we state the destination of where uh, we want this jar file to be and that's actually in my home directory on my desktop this is that file name so I've already gone through this step I just wanted to make sure that you saw where it's going uh, so let's just cancel out of that that jar is now available on my desktop so if I want to include that I could just go to jshell minus C and then uh, give the full jar file name which was superman dot jar so hit enter and notice it's saying you know it's not able to locate where this file is. So again, I saved it to my desktop. So let's give the full uh, uh, destination of where this file resides on this system. So that's actually going to be um, jshell minus c, and then I give the exact location, which is users slash mtiazamod slash desktop. And then we give the file name, which is superman.jar. So this should work. Hit enter, and if, with any luck, there we go. We're inside of JShell. We've loaded the, uh, we've brought in this external library, so to speak. Right, this is an external uh, jar that contains this method, that contains this class. So I can actually import this particular package. Um, what is the package? It's com.printer.utils. So I could do import com.printer utils and then do a dot star so it'll bring everything in this package and right now we only have this one class which is superprinter.java so let's hit enter and uh, we don't see any errors so that means we should have brought in this type if I do slash type hit enter 
it's not going to recognize this type as something that's available because um, we haven't actually declared this type in the shell. So if we were to define super printer in the J shell session itself, only then would that be printed if we were to use slash type. I just wanted to bring that to your attention. But anyway, I could, uh, you know, if I do slash imports, this is going to state all of the imports. Uh, most of these are coming from the Java standard libraries. And then this is the guy that I brought in as part of this jar called superman.jar. Okay, so I should have the ability to create an instance of super printer and then invoke the print method, right? That's how I can test other APIs, other jars that I bring into this J shell session, right? So let's do that. Let's create an instance of super printer and I'll call it SP is equal to new super printer and hit enter and there we go. We've got an object called SP. So I can use that object to invoke the print method. And of course, what does this method do? It's just supposed to print some random text. So just hit enter and boom, there you go. Notice we are able to explore other jars, external jars, uh, by including them in this JShell and invoking their methods as we've done here. So JShell is a very handy utility. It was introduced in the latest version of Java, Java 9, and I encourage you to experiment with it, learn it, and it's going to become much, much more popular in the Java ecosystem. So that about wraps up this lecture. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon.